Well, the pack two is now the pack six. And week three of college football was another insane week of games, let me tell you. Um, so let's start off with the big one. The Pac-12 has added four new teams, Colorado State, Boise State, San Diego State, and Fresno State to the fold with Oregon State and Washington State. Notice all the states in there, you know, <laughs> just, just to keep it 100 with you. I had forgotten about this initially for a second. I was like, wait, I'm missing something. I'm missing something. And it was like, oh, yeah, the Pac-12 added four new teams. Like, that's the biggest news all week. Right, right. You would think that's the biggest news all week. People have been talking about other stuff. Um, and the Pac-12 is looking for more. Tulane, Memphis, UNLV, a lot of names getting thrown around in a hat. Texas State, you know, a lot of names are getting thrown around in a hat. A lot of names could be added. Can't add Stanford and Cal right now because the ACC grant of rights. Florida State doesn't want to be in the back 12 anyway, so it's like, no, that's not happening. Maybe USF, seeing people throw them around. But, yeah, week three, week three, week three. You know, Quint Ewers, you know, he had a little rib injury, abdominal injury, so Arch Manning stepped up and just took over five TDs in that game against UTSA. Yeah, it was UTSA, but – that combined with Georgia just struggling with Mark Stoops and his inability to not play it safe. You know, Georgia barely beat Kentucky by one point. Carson Beck and company looked off the entire game. That Kentucky defense was on something. And when the offense, when the offense of the Wildcats was able to do something, they did something. They scored a bunch of field goals, but they did something, you know, way better than what Clemson did. I'll tell you that much. Much better fight, you know, than those Tigers. Um, so, yeah, we don't know how long Quinn will be out, but Texas is number one, and then Georgia is number two. Now the two teams have flip-flopped. Kansas State, on the other hand, starting the Big 12 gauntlet of dog-walking Arizona behind Avery Johnson, running and throwing the ball all over the place. Missouri with their stellar DBs, and, of course, Brady Cook on, you know, the offense side of the ball with Theo Weiss, Luther Burden, um, Noel at running back. They outlast Boston College and Thomas Castellanos. Jalen Milrow, he is going to be a problem. He had five touchdowns yet again in this in this last game. You know, against Wisconsin, of course, they lost Tyler Van Dyke to injury, but again, it's Wisconsin. You know, not a team that strikes fear in the many anymore. Oregon, Notre Dame, they impressed big wins. Oregon, you know, looks like a team that finally played up to their potential. Notre Dame looks like a team that could win 11 games again. You know, they look like a team that could win 11 games again with that performance. Riley Leonard apparently was banged up, but apparently not. He played his heart out in this game against Purdue. Oregon, on the other hand, again, blasting Oregon State. LSU, on the other hand, had to come back from 17 down. You know, ref ball bound to just be all over this game. Lenore Sellers was running all over them until he got hurt. Oklahoma struggled yet again against Tulane this time instead of Houston, which is a problem. And Michigan continues to confuse me because uh, Davis Warren, you know, he, he threw, he was 11 to 14, but all three incompletions were picks, and Arkansas State was able to score 18, while Michigan was only able to score 28. So, yeah, it was rough. It was a rough time watching, you know, watching some of these teams this week. And, again, like, again, the Big 12 is going to be a gauntlet. We have another crazy set of Big 12 games this week. Let me tell you, we have – Kansas State BYU in the Big 12 after dark game. BYU is unbeaten. Kansas State, you know, looking to stay unbeaten. It's an after dark game, so things will get weird. I'll tell you that much. I'm going to pair it up with some volleyball. It's going to be great. It's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great time because it's a top 11 matchup in college volleyball in Kentucky and Louisville, or rather Kentucky and Stanford in volleyball. Also at the same time. So we got ACC after dark, 
and Big 12 at the dark. If you're a volleyball person. Um, as far as that early slate of games goes, there's really nothing there. I mean, Clemson's time for them to put up or shut up. We already saw how NC State did against Tennessee. We already saw how Clemson did against Georgia. But, you know, the ACC needs a playoff team. And we don't know if it'll be Cal or Miami or Duke or somebody else yet. So we need to put a team like Clemson that's, you know, been barely in the top 20 while they're hanging on in there by a thread. And we need to see something from them. Um, yeah, Kate Klubnick, you know, had a seven touchdown performance against App State, but again, that was App State. Yeah, it's not that's not an App State that won three national championships all in a row. That's an App State that's adjusted to the FBS and is just kind of mid now. Let's just be real. Um, so yeah, Clemson NC State, if you want to watch that, that's like the only game in the early window that really matters on Saturday. Yeah, there's Marshall, Ohio State. That might get weird, but honestly, it's Ohio State. They, you know, they don't they don't have games like Penn State. Well, actually, never mind. Because Penn State and Notre Dame get MAC teams yet again this week. Yeah. Isn't that gonna be fun? Um again, the Big 12 is going to be a gauntlet. Oklahoma State led by Ollie Gordon will take on a Cam Risingless Utah. Okay, rising still. But that defense for the Utes is A1, A1 thick and hardy, and just an absolute unit of a defense that can really tangle with anybody, you know, really tangle with anybody. Um, again, K-State, BYU to end the night, if you're into that. And, of course, USC, it's Miller time. Taking on Alex Orgy. Yes, Alex Orgy is going to be the starting quarterback for the Michigan Wolverines. I know. Crazy times, right? Davis Warner will no longer be the starting quarterback for the Wolverines. Now it's Orgy's time. Like it probably should have been at the beginning of the year, but you know, stuff's been happening with the Wolverines. Stuff's been happening. So, and then you paired it up with that Utah Oklahoma State game, pair that USC Michigan game up with that going to be fun. And of course, the Josh Heupel show late, 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 6.30, ABC, Tennessee, Oklahoma, Tennessee lit by Nico and that struggling Oklahoma offense with Jackson Arnold and crew, and crew, you know, could be a long, long night for Mr. Arnold. Could be a long night for him. If things go Tennessee's way, you know, because again, that offense can blazingly move. They can move fast. They can move like crazy. They can do whatever they want to on the offensive side of the ball. If the dog don't stop barking, I swear on my life, but it's all right. You know, again, Oklahoma, Tennessee, going to be interesting to see how this game goes on Saturday night because again, it's going to be, it's going to be wild because I, I just don't, see Oklahoma really doing anything, you know, in this game. And it's like Tennessee, you know, they have an offense that can move up and down the field in bunches, not chunks, not little small chunks, but bunches. We're talking, they pick up a bunch of flowers, they're going to throw them at you. You know, it's not one little flower that they're going to hand to you. It's a bunch of flowers. They're going to throw it in your face. You know, that team can be mean. And they have shown so far what that defense can do, like they did against NC State. And this could prove the same thing against this Oklahoma team. And then, of course, you know, again, the teams like LSU trying to they need to put up or shut up. You know, it, it's a put up or shut up type thing with LSU. And, you know, Missouri's taking on Vanderbilt this week as well. So, you know, that's going to be intriguing. You know, Arch Manning looks like he will play yet again against um, ULM, so that should be intriguing. Of course, there's still some games, you know, we're still not there in conference play just yet. We're easing into it. We got teams like Louisville playing a conference game against Georgia Tech. That should be interesting. But some teams like Miami or, again, Penn State, Notre Dame, um, you know, they're still kind of playing. On, they're, they're still trying to eat their cupcakes a little bit, so. We'll see how everything goes this week, along with, of course, another Friday night game. I don't think I forgot. 
Illinois, Nebraska. A lot of people are not liking Dylan Riola. You know, they're not liking the guy. You know, it's kind of similar to the to the Colorado State quarterback talking nonsense to Shadur Sanders and crew, but um, you know, Colorado whooped Colorado State. But this is different. This is a conference game between two teams that are that are very intriguing. Illinois is very intriguing, along with Nebraska. And Illinois has a defense that can actually play some pretty good football. The offense is okay. And Nebraska, you know, they showed us what they could do against Colorado. And they could show us what they can do again. And this will be the third, the fourth and uh, the fourth and final ranked matchup to talk about. Because there are four ranked matchups this week. So, you know, times are going to be tight. And, and, you know, it's the top 25 will get shaken up, of course, because it's going to be a weird week again. I guarantee you we'll have another game like Georgia, Kentucky that might go in someone's favor. You know, on, on the team that's the underdog side, kind of like how NIU Notre Dame went. So who knows? Who knows how this week will go? I'm excited for it. Have some polls up throughout the week. I'm still trying to figure out some other stuff. But the NFL tomorrow, because I need to talk about the NFL, because there's some crazy things that happen in the NFL. And from me to you, um, good night. And I'll see you again soon, everybody.